Hello everyone, Peter Smith here. I'm, it's uh, Sunday night and I'm at home, home alone. Don't know where my wife is. She's away somewhere, probably with the grandchildren and our daughter. Um, didn't go to church tonight. I'd been uh, this morning and this afternoon. I'm still jet lagged from coming back from the UN. Fell asleep at the Broken Chains service today so i didn't go tonight because i just fall asleep again and i won't get any sleep much tonight if i do that so i've been back from the un a bit over a week um i want to talk to you about immigrants and migration and this migrant caravan down on the mexican border with the united states um i'm a migrant i'm from australia and i live in scotland now and i married a scottish lady in melbourne well, we got married in Scotland, but we were living in Melbourne then. And she was a migrant to Australia. So I know a bit about migrants, because I'm one and my wife's one. And my brother's one. He lives in California. And my brother-in-law's a migrant, lives in Nova Scotia in Canada. And so I've got a lot of migrants in the family. Um, now, this migrant caravan coming up from uh, Honduras and Guatemala and all those places, you got it you got to think about this. Why is the traffic all going one way? Why is it just going north? Why don't they go to Venezuela? That's meant to be a communist paradise. Well, <laughs> see, 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 there's no, no exploitation there, you know. You see, these, these Marxists say, oh, in a capitalist society, all getting exploited. Well, in Venezuela, they're starving. They're starving. I don't see many people migrating into Venezuela. Anyway, I digress. This migrant caravan. Well, you see, they're up against President Trump. And he's a difficult, nasty person. He, he seems to think that because he's President of the United States, he's meant to protect the borders of the United States. Which is not a bad idea. And I, coming from Australia, we, we have a coastline which is protected. You don't try and sneak into Australia in those little illegal migrant boats. They haven't had one of them try it for three years. Of course, the Royal Australian Air Force spots you and the Royal Australian Navy come and picks you up and drags you off to Papua New Guinea or somewhere or Nauru or some other little Pacific island. So you don't get in. So the Aussies, big bunch of ex-convicts like my family, they have a system. And you're meant to get in line and apply and do it legally. And that's the way it should be. I'm not against, I'm not against migrants because I'm one myself. Now, I just saw, I've been watching these YouTube things and they had Vincent A. Fox, the ex-president of Mexico. He says, walls don't work. Well, I've been to Israel, and they've got a really big wall. It's more than 20 feet tall, and it's a big solid concrete thing. And they have cut down on the problems 99%. Now, as I mentioned before, I live in Scotland, and there's a thing called Hadrian's Wall down at the southern border that the Romans put up, and there's still a bit of it there. They were wanting to keep these wild Scots from running amuck in the, in the Roman Empire, so they built a wall. Great Wall of China. Now, well, this, this president, Vincente Fox, I'll bet you he's got a big house in Mexico with a great big wall around it, and it works. And if Donald Trump could get the US Congress to stump up the money. And you got to remember, President Trump is a property developer. And if he couldn't build a fine wall across the southern US border, I don't know who could. So he's just got to get the money and he'll stop a lot of the drug traffic and the people trafficking and the illegal this and that and the other thing. And it'll be a good thing. And people should apply. Now, I'll tell you a really sad story. I was, I was in Israel 
The second time I went, and um, big chap, I was sitting beside this really big chap. He was fat. He was big. He really should have had almost two seats. And he just flopped into, he's flopped on the seat and he was asleep. So when it came time for a meal, he woke up and, and we got chatting. And I'll tell you what, this, this is a cautionary tale. A cautionary tale. This man was a Palestinian nominal Christian. Not a Palestinian Muslim, but a Palestinian nominal Christian. And his parents immigrated to the United States when he was a baby, about one year old. And they grew up near Michigan or somewhere like that. And, he, and I believe his parents got US citizenship. And he didn't bother. He didn't bother. Okay? And he had a little dealership selling car accessories. And he employed eight or ten people. And he was doing a great job. He had a partner. They weren't married. They had a partner, American lady. They had four kids. Everything's going well. And he's making lots of money. And it all's good. And he's in this little town near Michigan or somewhere near there or Chicago. I'm not sure exactly where it was. Somewhere in the middle of the country. And he gets this idea that he's going to run for mayor. Right? Now, this was where he made a mistake. There was a particular detective in that town who he didn't like. And I don't think the detective liked him. And he said to this detective when he was running for mayor that the first thing he was going to do as mayor was to sack this detective. Now, this is a dangerous thing, a dangerous thing. You shouldn't threaten people and give them a chance to get you. So what this detective did, he went and checked up on this fella. And he discovered that this chap had been pretending to have cars stolen and they weren't stolen and it was insurance fraud. So he would sell a car to somebody on the sly and then pretend it was stolen and he defrauded the insurance company. He did three or four of these. So this detective checked it. Yeah, they, these people can do that. They can check up on these sorts of things. And there was too many claims. So he did a little bit of detectiving and he found out it was a setup. And he gets arrested. And he's not an American citizen. And he was done for, is it larceny or something, over $10,000. And you get deported. So he was deported back to Bethlehem in Palestine. And he'd been working, repairing lifts, couldn't, couldn't make enough money to live. I don't think he'd seen his, his partner and, and four kids since all this happened. And he'd gone back to live in Mexico and trying to get a business going, selling car accessories like he did in America, and hoping that his wife and kids, sorry, partner and his kids might come down and see him. So there's... There's a cautionary tale. If you're a Palestinian and you go and live in America, do it legally and apply for American citizenship. Now, I've got a brother who lives in California. Younger than me. Civil engineer. I did mechanic. He's civil. And he immigrated to the United States legally. And he got his green card. And now he's an American citizen. Still got the Aussie passport. We, we Aussies hang on to our passports. We don't give them up too easily. It's a good passport. So he, he did it the right way. He got legal advice initially. They got bad legal advice. And, uh, and, and the next le attorney said, no, get married. So I, I, got, I got asked to go over and be best man at two days' notice. It cost me $1,400. I've been trying to get that money back off Bruce for a long time, but he's, he's, oh, he's crying poor. He's crying poor. But anyway, anyway, I'm hoping to go and see him in January, and I might put the finger on him for a bit of that money. 
of course he owes me, but he he wasn't working then. You see, he said, "Oh, he said I got no money. I can't can't pay you back." But, but anyway, I was best man. We went out on a yacht off Tijuana. The, no, not Tijuana, off the island of um, of um, Catalina. Great American flying boats, the Catalinas. That's a Catalina Island. It's a beautiful spot. We're out in this yacht. And we got we got married out there. It was good. And I've got a brother-in-law. He's migrated to Canada. Lives in Nova Scotia. Went and went and visited him summer last year. It was great. It was great. Did it legally. You do it legally. If you if you immigrate legally, it's great. But if you try and sneak in, ooh, it's, you, you know, it's it's got problems. It's got problems. So, oh, my book on Reg. I've sold over a hundred copies. It's been going well. So if you haven't got one of my books on Reg, it's a great story, I'm told. Other people have said, oh, it's a good read. So if you'd like to get that, it's at www.lulu.com. And you just punch in Peter Smith as the author and Reg. And you'll find it there and you can get a good read. It's got lots of lots of testimonies and different other stuff in it. And it's, a, it's a sad story, but good in other ways. Uh, you might enjoy it. And I've also, I've got also something else here to show you. I'll, I'll be writing a book on the UN. There it is there, see that? It's got to be checked off by a few people. And I'm hoping to have that ready by January. So that's, oh, that's 330 pages. Oh boy, that was hard work. It's hard work. I can yak away on a YouTube channel or do a bit of preaching or argue or or harass the delegates at the UN. I can do that easy. But writing, it's agony. It's agony. I've got Grammarly and I don't get the commas in the right place. And it's, you know, it's a bit It's a bit nightmarish, but but it's yeah. People say it's not a bad read. Now it's not very posh English. It's just a bit of rough Tasmanian English, but it's all I got. It's all I got. So uh, that UN, UN book's not for sale yet. Hopefully in January. I'm heading off, heading off to America, middle of January, going to a conference in Arizona, hoping to see my brother in California for maybe for a week. If everything works out there, I do that sometimes. Put put the pressure on him for that money. But I'll be lucky. I reckon I'll be lucky. He's always crying poor. Um, but him and his wife have got good jobs. But nah, it's expensive in California. Expensive. That socialist government's very expensive, California. So I'll be back at the UN uh, late January for the NGO committee and then commission on... Uh, Social development, then I got the women's meeting. Oh, the feminists love me. Oh, they just love me. Then population development, then NGO committee. So there's there's a lot of lot of UN lot of UN meetings on in the first half of the year. So it's going good. The UN stuff. Well, it's going. It's 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 hard because the US aren't very organised. Trump's Trump's not putting his best team up there in the in the. On the UN delegation, I don't think. But there it is, there it is. They're, they're doing a little bit, but they could be doing a lot better. But anyway, you never know how it might work out. Um, I'm just thinking what else is going on. Oh, yes, I've, I've got type 2 diabetes now, so no desserts or cheesecake or that stuff. I'm, I'm taking the medicine, and, and it's, it's working good. I don't get up to go to the toilet as much during the night, which is good. And I got a few other bits and pieces wrong with me. I'm getting old and a bit worn out, but um, still up to giving them cheek at the UN for a little bit longer. Hopefully, that's what I hope to do, and uh, try and try and have an effect, protecting unborn children and all that sort of stuff, which I've been doing for a long time. Um, that's right, my granddaughter. Danced at the pantomime here Friday night. She was wonderful, wonderful, dancing around like a little fairy. She was great. Very proud granddad. Oh, she did it. She did a great job. We all went along to the pantomime uh, Friday night. That's a that's a very Scottish thing. They they do pantomime or the panto they call it. It's it's good. It's good. We had a good time. 
and I've been doing Christmas cards, uh, it's Christmas cards, Christmas cards, and uh, not sure. Oh, I got men's dinner tomorrow night um, with the church. I'm taking someone along. Um, he's not a believer, but uh, you never know what might happen. Never know what might happen. Never, never know what might happen. And oh, this this book on Reg. There's lots of testimonies in there about people who got saved. People who got saved. Now, this Palestinian chap I was telling you about, I got to share the gospel with him. And someone in prison in America got to share the gospel with him. And, and I said, well, maybe the Lord's speaking to you. You know, you might want to start listening up a bit. Your life's in a mess. And I said it nicely, but that was the import, and it was in a mess. So that's a lesson for you. If you're not a citizen of the country and you're running for mayor... Don't threaten detectives or other people like that because they can dig up something on you and whoosh, you're deported and it's not nice. So that's what's happening in, in um, down in Mexico. They're trying to rush the wall and all these big border guards are there with the tear gas and the rubber bullets and uh, all the rest of that good stuff. And they're not letting anyone through. And that's right, they shouldn't. It should be done legally. You should do it the proper way. And if you are a refugee in fear of your life, you're not meant to rush the border. Just a little hint, just a little hint. It should all be done according to the law. We are to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. So God bless you and... Um, if I don't do another one before Christmas, have a Merry Christmas. God bless you.